sensing he was close to a major discovery, pressed on. Finally, in the shadow of the huge wall of earth his excavation of the mound had created, another tomb was uncovered. Now protected behind closed doors and covered by a metal roof, stairs lead down some ten meters to Andronicus's greatest discovery. Tons of earth were cleared to reveal a monumental tomb with a facade over five meters high. Its Doric-style columns framed a door still sealed and intact. Above the door, a mural where youthful riders and athletic warriors hunt in a winter landscape. Behind the facade was a large vault, some ten meters long. Its arched construction, an advanced piece of architectural design. Whatever treasures it contained had been hidden from view for 23 centuries. Until on November the 8th, 1977, the keystone was lifted and Andronicus peered inside. On the floor of the tomb, exactly where they had first been placed, was an array of splendid objects. They represented the great power of the man whose remains lay in this marble sarcophagus. When its lid was lifted, Andronicus found inside a golden funeral casket known as a larnax. to reveal cremated bones, stained purple by the decomposed cloth in which they'd been wrapped. Resting on top was a golden crown of finely wrought oak leaves. treasures that survive from the tomb are symbols of war, like this armour, fringed with gold and studded with lion's heads. And these gilded bronze leg guards or greaves. Objects like this ceremonial shield took five years to reconstruct from all the tiny fragments which littered the floor of the tomb. Today, all the remaining pieces from the chamber are stored in the conservation lab at Vagina, awaiting reconstruction. They have been spread out in their thousands, exactly as they were found in the tomb. They are even kept in layers, on top of each other, in the way they originally fell to the floor.
Made of ivory, bronze, glass and gold, the fragments fit together, somehow, into the furnishings which adorned the tomb. Tiny golden figures from Greek mythology decorated the wooden funeral couch. Other lifelike figures with ivory heads were also attached to the couch. Could these be the dead man and his family? All the artifacts clearly showed that the tomb belonged to a powerful and wealthy warrior. But this symbol said something more, for it was the starburst emblem of the Macedonian kings. For Andronicus that meant one dramatic possibility. Might this be the tomb of Macedonia's great king, Philip II? Could the contents of the tomb provide any further clues? In the tomb we found uh, some ivory heads. Uh, among them was one uh, which uh, uh, I thought that was the portrait of Philip because the right eye of this ivory head was a blind eye and we knew that Philip was blind in his uh, right eye. But I had another uh, argument. The likeness with a gold medallion from Tassos, well known, uh, was very great. Philip II whom the Athenians reviled as the chief of a barbarian tribe until he came to dominate the whole of Greece. And whose son, Alexander the Great, set off to conquer the Persian Empire, spreading Macedonian power to the edges of the known world. Another clue was found on the mural, which shows a group of hunters, among whom are two distinguished riders. The whole painting has been recreated by Yorgos Mirzakakis. My opinion is that the central horseman, which is uh, between two, the two trees, uh, is Alexander the Great. And uh, when we found, I thought that this could be the, the dead. But as we understood that the dead was not a young man, but a mature man, uh, I realized that the dead was the other horseman, which is not very obvious now because of the damages, and uh, I distinguish in his face the face of Philip. The date of the artifacts found uh, in this tomb and out of this tomb were dated uh, in the third quarter of the fourth century, that means 350 to 325 BC. We knew that uh, during this period only one king was uh, dead and buried. Then, if the dead was correct, and to my opinion, and to, according to the opinion of all archaeologists, I think, uh, is correct, the only candidate was Philip. But it was the bones taken from the Larnax that provided the most graphic proof for the final identification. And this was made possible through the efforts of a British team of physical anthropologists who analysed and reconstructed the face of the dead king. When we were examining the skull, the face and the jaws, uh, we observed first of all a neck out of the upper border of the right eye socket and we also observed asymmetries between the upper and lower jaws on right and left sides. Uh, which may indeed fit in with the injuries that Philip received 18 years before his death at the siege of Methone in 354, uh, when an arrow fired from the wall removed his right eye. 
Despite such terrible mutilation, Philip lived on to fight more foreign wars and expand his empire. Until here, just outside his palace, in the theatre uncovered by Andronicus in 1982, he was murdered by an enemy from within. It was dawn on a day of celebration. The people of Igea pressed into the theatre. 